All right, back in the locker room again. Uh, we're sticking with the football theme, and this is uh, actually in, in sequence as the second sort of installment after um, uh, talking about power. So uh, now we've gone from COVID to uh, mental health to uh, uh, musculoskeletal pain to neurodegenerative disorders, circled around a little bit and moved on to uh, talking about uh, football. And the last session we talked about uh, the power play uh, being the best uh, play in football and went through the mechanics of the power play uh, and uh, complementary plays that go with it to essentially working it in uh, to a system. But um, <clears throat> it, it can't uh, uh, stand alone. Um, and so we're going to move on to um, uh, a, uh, a complementary package instead of a com complementary plays. And the, the complementary, complementary package is our screen package, which is, uh, is a gap concept. It's uh, therefore um, a zone concept, as some people would refer it to, uh, where uh, individuals are responsible for uh, blocking uh, their gaps. And in this case, we, well, let's go back to power. We talked about power being a gap concept the way we teach it as well, where we're, we're um, blocking the backside gaps or the gaps away from the play. And in order to gain an advantage to the play side, we bring a backside guard looping around to lead the play. Uh, with our screen concept, um, we're, uh, we're attacking a little bit wider, uh, and so we really can't wait for a backside guard to come around and, and, and help out. Um, but in, in the same respect, um, now we are attacking play side gaps, and we're actually therefore trying to gain a gap and gain an advantage of manpower to the play side uh, and, and uh, overwhelm our opponent uh, that way. Um, the play um, hits a, just a little bit uh, slower, uh, and so it is somewhat at risk for uh, losses, uh, and, uh, and gaining a gap to the play side is a more challenging type of a block in some respects, and so uh, sometimes uh, if we don't uh, get the advantage at the gap, we can you know, be at risk for getting some uh, penetration. So. We have to build into uh, the the play uh, how we deal with uh, with that so that we can use it more uh, to our advantage uh, than necessarily uh, our disadvantage. Um, and uh, uh, a lot of people um, uh, tend to slow play uh, this type of uh, play a little bit. We're a little bit more aggressive with our footwear footwork footwork up front. Uh, particularly on the play side, uh, to be attacking, and uh, with our, our running back uh, coming downhill, um, we are uh, uh, not uh, slow to go. We're, uh, that's why it's called scream. Uh, we are uh, essentially trying to get more to the edge of the box uh, as fast as possible while reading uh, the blocking scheme on the run. And opposed to power, where we talked about we really want to get up and follow color or our own color up into the hole. If we don't see daylight, uh, then we want to uh, uh, still s stay on track, following the blockers, following our color uh, up into the hole and staying balanced with the legs grinding uh, to pop out the other side. A little bit similar here, as long as uh, we see color, uh, we can uh, follow that. It's when uh, we start to see opposite color uh, that now that may be an indication that we've got to put a foot in the ground and, and get vertical um, or, or even cut it back a, a little bit. Um, but the same principle applies. Uh, to our screenplay as to power is it's very important to us as a run-based team to stay on the chains. So our backs need to be attacking with enough um, intention, uh, with enough uh, velocity uh, and uh, sort of an intensity uh, that um, 
uh, when they put, if, if they have to put their foot in the ground and get vertical or vertical or even cut it back, um, we want to at least gain a yard. We never want to lose ground on this play. So we don't want to do any bubble cuts. Uh, we can have a jump cut, uh, but no bubble cuts, no, no bubbling back. Uh, we've got to continue to work uh, with a forward momentum uh, and never take a, a loss of yardage on this play as well. So let's go to the board and talk about it more specifically. All right, so we're using the same formation we used before, something we would call a red formation, but we're tied in to the right. We've got a flanker out and a split out. And what we didn't uh, just talk about, the advantage of, of, uh, of running uh, this play side gap scheme is we don't have to be two backs. I've shown this with two backs in the backfield uh, just to, to uh, make it have some uh, integrity uh, with our power system that we went into that's uh, much more requires a two back set. But the advantage of having this as a complement to power is it's very easy to get out of a two back set into a, a single back set and still have uh, a very effective offense. Um, so we tend to sit, stay with our same split rules uh, with this. We don't want to uh, get too wide for a variety of reasons. So getting too wide, uh, it, it does increase the running lanes per se. Uh, but sometimes it makes it more difficult to get our, our double teams or our combination blocks. And sometimes if we get too open in our gaps, uh, pass protection, uh, the way we do pass protection, can get uh, a little bit more uh, challenging as well. Um, so we're going to stay with, with those same basic uh, gap rules um, and uh, of about uh, 18 to 24 inches. In some situations, it's situationally, but not consistently, where it will be to our advantage, uh, depending on the front, uh, uh, we may go up to a three-foot uh, gap. And I've labeled the gaps. The two interior gaps are A gaps. The next gap over is B. The next gap over is C. Okay. So, by rule, how do we attack these gaps? Well, um, we're going to do play side gap, so everybody's gapping to the play side if we're running the play to the right. Um, and the footwork's slightly different, a little less aggressive uh, than when we're running uh, power. So um, if we start from the outside in, we're going to have our tight end uh, take uh, just a little flat step, a little power step, and uh, then uh, fire out at a 30 degree angle. Uh, a little power step by the tackle, fire out at a 30 degree angle, uh, power step here to the gap, fire out 30 degree angle, um, power step here, and then 30 degrees as well. And that may be one of the more crucial uh, gaps right here for the center to be able to achieve that gap uh, uh, and control it can be uh, challenging. Again, if we were to go sort of the same all the way across, we'd do the same and we could teach it that way. On the back side, we tend to do the same as we do on power uh, with these guys as we run a little bit more of a scoop technique um, to pick up the gap. So, and, and, and as I said, uh, we would be running some form of combination typically uh, blocks across the front to make sure we don't miss anything. But basically, we want, we're not looking to drive, to turn everything and drive it that way. We are wanting to stay on this vector, okay? It's about a 30 degree vector and drive that way. So we feel that, you know, if we try to drive vertical while we're gaining a gap, that's a challenge because these are big bodies and they're fully braced behind themselves and that's the opposite vector that they're going in. We feel like one of the advantage to this, uh, and it, it also on power when we're blocking the other gap, the backside gap, but on this is that we're coming just slightly at an angle and we know what we're doing. They may not know. And that um, they don't have the full um, force of leverage of their, uh, their hind end and their legs and their feet behind them 
uh, on uh, this slight uh, vector, okay? So now what we want out of the backs is uh, we want, uh, is like choreography, right? So we actually want our full back to take a, a similar little flat uh, step on the snap, uh, get a, a little bit more clearance away from uh, the quarterback so he doesn't clip them, but also, and then attacking the B gap here essentially on that same vector, okay? And what he is keeping in mind is, what's this guy doing, okay? Is this guy, is this guy gonna, is he gonna plug here, right? Or when he sees this flow, is he gonna scrape over the top? So we can eyeball him, uh, pick him up off that, that step, and then just work through open space to prevent any penetration from coming through or to pick up the scrape. Okay, now the tailback's going to do the same thing. He's going to take one little flat power step, get himself oriented in the same vector, and now he's driving at C gap. Okay. And all this is going to be is what happens to his tackle. We want to run it the same whether we're running it to a tight end or to a split end, an open end, you know, the skinny side, whatever you want to call it. Um, because we don't want the backfield mechanics to change and we don't want this guy to have to change his reads. But essentially, this is a much faster play uh, in trying to get to the edge. So if, if our tackle is, is getting good uh, uh, movement um, through whoever shows up in his gap, um, and we've kind of secured inside, hopefully here, pretty well, um, then we're going to just keep following his butt. You're just going to keep running right, right through there and follow his butt. But let's say he has trouble uh, and he gets his door opened a little bit. Um, so we're getting some pressure through here and all of a sudden we're starting to see opposite color off the edge and our tackle's butt has turned and we're, not, we're no longer in the same vector. Um, probably not gonna try to bounce, right? We don't like bouncing. We do not want to lose yards. So we're not gonna do that deal going to put a foot in the ground at that point and get vertical, okay? And if you can, you can, you know, do it as a jump cut as well. Um, and similarly, if you do that and the door is closed there, then you're here. And in some cases, you know, it will peel all the way out uh, the back side. So that's how we run it. Um, because, uh, the handoff is a little bit more out here uh, than uh, in this plane. We don't have to give up the midline as much. Uh, uh, we want the quarterback to take a direct opening uh, this way, okay? And then from the handoff, he's going to go ahead and do his uh, drop as we've done uh, before, but now you can see uh, his drop site you know, the handoff will actually probably uh, carry him more out here. His drop's going to be more behind the tackle than behind the guard. Uh, he'll drop and then give us a little boot to hold the back side. Um, and that's, that's kind of the, the uh, fun, fundamental uh, 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 play action uh, that we get out of this, out of the quarterback. Uh, no different on how we block here. We're always trying to get inside leverage on the corners and, in fact, trying to get a second level block uh, on a safety if available. Uh, and if not, if he's not crashing or he rolls away, throttle down, turn it back, keep the corner out of the play. If you see him coming down, if you can pick him up, that's great. Uh, if, uh, if he takes an inside vector, throttle down, turn it out, pick up the corner. Okay, so that's, that's just a, a basic uh, fundamental uh, screenplay that we run. And then let's quickly put
put up um, the play action uh, as we did with Tower. We went uh, uh, from uh, from a base play uh, to a play action, and then we ended up putting in a counter. And we kind of want to follow the similar thing. Uh, this is our sort of our our second package uh, that we like to run. So let's use that same front again. All right, um, so we want to make things look as much as possible like the run. So our pass protection in this case is also going to be a play side gap protection scheme. And again, sometimes that's, that's challenging and uh, we will do, you know, if we can't, we can run the same stuff with a backside gap or a turn back scheme as well. We can run the same plays using that. It's a little easier, it's a little safer, but it doesn't give us the action that we want. Uh, and, you know, and we, we want these guys out here who are reading, you know, outside in, reading guard to quarterback, reading maybe through tackle tight end to quarterback to see this as a run and think they are needed for run support. Um, so um, if we just do an automatic uh, turn back, on this, they, you know, it, it, it complements our power because if, if we turn it back here, it can look very much like a power play and we may still get this guy up. But if we're in our zone package and we're running a lot of it and it's working, we want to give them a look that, uh, you know, they, they have a hard time figuring it out. So we're always trying to mirror things up. So in terms of uh, the, the, um, the backfield action, as we saw, you know, we get a flat step and a vector here a flat step and a vector here, and the quarterback is coming straight out, he's not reversing out, and he's going to come off the fake and then set up just a little bit to the play side, kind of a um, little bit more towards the tackle than the guard. So that's, that's the action that we've got to protect. We've got to protect him right here. Um, so uh, on the way we're coming out of this with the tight end, he's going to take his flat step and his vector, right, uh, that hasn't changed. He's going to get a little friction perhaps on his release versus trying to work for a clean release. This guy's going to take his flat step here, and instead of turning, you know, 30 degrees uh, to, um, uh, to try to block uh, this man out, uh, he's, he's going to try to work towards a bit of a reach. Okay, and same thing here. We're going to take a flat step here and then work to reach. And same for the center. Again, center on all of these is a little challenging, but they got to work at it. Flat step here and then work to a reach. Similarly here, this is going to be flat step here, work to a reach. Flat step here, work to a reach. Okay, so that's, that's how we set up this this uh, front blocking. Now, we'll have combinations and other things going on to pick up the, the pass rush, but uh, the, everything's been covered. We've got all of our gaps blocked except the backside uh, C gap here. So that, that's our concern. We're setting our quarterback here. This guy's usually, you know, uh, a pretty good rusher. So we, we, have, we are moving him this way a little bit. So we have to have uh, several strategies for picking that up, and one of them is to turn everything back. Um, but in this case, what we do is if somebody comes up with air, uh, they come up, they go through their footwork, their gap rules, and they come up with air, they immediately go straight back and, uh, and pick up that edge rusher. In fact, we can end up with multiple guys uh, dropping out that way if, they, if two guys come up with... Uh, come up with air. They've got to set their gap first, but you could even see this guy potentially could come up with air, or he might be picking up the center's guy, and the center all of a sudden comes up with air, and then, you know, nobody can drop out completely because we got to clear the backs, but we're going to try to protect the back side and give this disguise up front. Now, we're just a matter of uh, coordinating the play action, and so in this case, uh, 
with our, our wide out over here, he normally takes that inside release, so we want an inside release here, we want an inside leveraged release there. Tight end's doing his deal, the backs are doing their deal. So what I, what I like to do uh, off of uh, this initially uh, is to allow this guy off of that inside release to kind of scare and hold the safeties by uh, running off to the back side. So, and then uh, classically the tight end off of his uh, release would be running uh, the corner route. The fullback uh, is going to find his uh, opening here, find air and space, and run the out route. Okay, and now our tailback, after a good uh, run fake, is going to come up and help seal the edge out here. I'm sorry. He's going to come out and try to protect the edge here. Uh, and if this is all holding up fine, uh, he can also look to the back side and even potentially pick up somebody coming late. Uh, but we do want a good run fake. Okay, so what do we need here? We need a mid-level route, so instead of working so vertical, he's going to take his inside release to the mid-level route at 12. So we've got a 5 and a 12, our corner, and a run off there. So a lot of people will recognize this play as uh, sort of John Gruden's uh, favorite play in in, in football, um, and, and it's a good play. I like it as well. We like to play with this a little bit uh, in terms of other things that we can potentially do with it. Um, it's always nice to to be aware of of this guy. If uh, you know, particularly if you bring him into a wing set uh, and you bring him under to the backside against man, uh, there's a very natural pick that can occur there. Uh, and you can get him wide open. Um, the other nice thing to do with this concept without changing things too terribly much uh, is to go ahead and, and run him on the skinny here instead of all the way across formation uh, and allow the tight end as he takes that outside release to then run the wheel route. And this doesn't have to be a tight end. In this offense, this can be uh, any number two uh, receiver. Um, and then you similarly still have your, your mid-level route coming and you still have your fullback out there. Okay, so we've got, uh, uh, and I'm sure we could think of other, other things we can do uh, out of this as well, but we basically got a base play screen. We got screen pass. Um, now we need a we need a counter. Oh, so, if you remember with uh, the power package when we went to counter, we actually ran the counter as a counter gap scheme. Um, with uh, this play, uh, we're going to complement our power uh, concept uh, again, and instead of running it as a counter gap scheme, we're going to run it as a counter tray scheme, which is a very similar play to power. Uh, so we're we're getting a different look. Um, but our guys are working on the same skills over and over again. So what we end up with here is our, our back's going to take this flat step, and he becomes the B-gap controller. Okay, Nothing's coming through the B-gap on this play with him. Okay, Our running back's going to also take the initial flat step, but in this case, just to make sure they don't creep forward, we're going to make them step backwards just a touch when they take that, that power step. Okay, So that's kind of the initial, what, they're, what we're seeing out of the backs. Uh, on the front, we're going, to go, we're going to go gap, gap, gap. So these aren't exactly scoop blocks, so they don't exactly look like uh, uh, you know, what they were doing on the screenplay. 
but they are moving the same direction. So these guys on the back side, hopefully are all reading that we got screen going out there and starting to fast flow. Okay, we're gonna pull our guard out and he's gonna come to the kick out. Should be this man unless he is, uh, uh, unless he slants inside, in which case he'll get washed down. And we'll pick up this guy. And it is distinctly possible he could slant this way given the, the coverage that they're in and we're strong here. They may be slanting their line that away. I don't to do this as a, as a V. Okay. Um, and then uh, our tackle also will pull on this and he's got the wrap block. Okay. We're also going to work to inside leverage. Again, if the safeties rotate or, or fast fill, leave them, get the corner. Otherwise we're getting this guy, um, our tight end here, his typical release for this play would be this direction. And we're going to stay with that. We're going to actually have him go ahead and engage that guy uh, first, and then we're going to let him release inside and get the third level. And then with uh, we're going to do inside release here. Um, if we can get you know to the second level, great. Otherwise, we'll turn it out on him. Okay, quarterback is opening without a reverse, and he's going towards the screen mesh point. Uh, but what he'll end up doing is as this back counters back, he'll hand, and then he's going to boot this way, okay? So that's not a very good mesh. That's a little rough. Um, when we come off the handoff, similarly here, it's a little slower, but by and large, we're going to coach it uh, similar to how we would coach uh, the power play, where he's, he's hanging tight because he wants to get on the hip of that tackle instead of the guard here and he's gonna ride that tackle. So what we've done here is we've just changed assignments from power, right? And the fullback's not kicking out, the guard's kicking out, the guard's not pulling up, the tackle's pulling up, and the tackle's not doing B-gap control, but our fullback's doing B-gap control. So we've essentially recreated power right here with this play. And then you can uh, naturally see uh, a counter pass that's available uh, off of this uh, this scheme as well, uh, where we you know just do the typical banana route here. We have our mid-level uh, delayed route here, and our fullback will get friction and run the shallow. Now, if we're having trouble protecting that, we might actually have the the fullback go ahead and reach there. Uh, and uh, and just pass protect, and this guy's going to uh, run because it's a it's a boot uh, instead of the crosser. He's got the far post route, uh, and and now we have waggle pass or or a uh, counter screen pass uh, already built in. So you can see how easily uh, we can um, uh, build a package if we just stick with some of those fundamental rules um, and then you know you can start expanding from there. Um, let's just talk about real quick about the reads here for the for the linebackers that come into play. So when we're um, running a, a power play, uh, remember we're, if we're running it to the right, we're gonna gap this way, okay? We're gonna gap that way, gap that way. So the linebackers see that and they go down block, they're running power, okay? Somebody's gonna pull around. I'm gonna play this direction. Um, the backs they can get a, they're going to get full flow of backs in that direction and they could read the backs as well and perhaps be correct now the the the, the next problem comes is uh 
these kind of uh, blocks don't necessarily mean we're getting a wraparound of power, okay? Because these kind of blocks on the back side very well could be uh, a screen play coming off this way. And if this backer flows that way, we've just taken care of him by confusing uh, his read of the lineman, okay? So, so, that, so, so the gap scheme can be a little bit of a counter uh, to uh, the power scheme and keep the linebackers uh, guessing as to exactly what's happening. So I uh, always like to keep, uh, keep that in mind if you've got super aggressive, uh, you know, fast-flowing uh, backers to, uh, you know, to the power side. Um, they m maybe will go this way and you know we may end up getting a nice little crease by running scream away from them. Now the other thing the backers can do is they can read um, flow and typically you would read the, the fullback. So that's why we have the counters built in. Uh, we get, we have in both power and in scream, uh, we have our uh, split flow plays. So if they start just reading the fullback, um, that's not going to be a consistent read for them either. So we're, we're trying to freeze those uh, linebackers in the, in the reading process. Um, now, the other thing to comment on is that we, we like this because uh, the screen package, um, because it allows us, that fullback is a little extra insurance, but but by gaining a gap and using combination blocks, we can account for these uh, linebackers without actually using the fullback. Um, so that's pretty nice because it gives us, you know, the opportunity uh, to either move the fullback out and put in a wide receiver, or and use him as a receiver if he happens to be one of the better athletes, or simply take him out of the game and get an extra wide receiver in. And we can still run the, the same concepts. Uh, you know, we just uh, now have an extra route that we have to define uh, in, the, in the mix. Uh, and usually, as we assign it from the base, we will tell him he needs to get to where the fullback would normally get to. So let's say we were running, uh, you know, a screen pass here, and the fullback normally would be out there in the flat. This guy's... Um, running the mid-level. All this is is he's he's running across uh, coming into the quarterback's vision a little bit later than the fullback. But we wouldn't change too much. Now, we can tag things, we can put in more routes, but it gives us it gives us that. The other thing it also gives us uh, is um, that we can get back into a shotgun or even even into a pistol formation. Uh, and you know we can still uh, we can still run our uh, screenplay uh, from that. In fact, we we have ways where we can run a. It's not a pure power play. I hate to call it that, but we can run pick and pull plays from our power scheme uh, uh, with uh, this kind of a formation or or in a pistol. Um, so that gives us a lot of flexibility. In fact, you know, we can get a tight end out of the game as well and uh, get into, you know, something, a uh, formation like that and really kind of get the field spread out, which, you know, opens this up. And as you already know, we've got the screenplay, but off of, uh, but off of power, we also have a, a, another play uh, off of the counter that you know, would attack a little tighter inside. Um, so we've got very much a, a full complement that we can run from multiple formations and uh, be pretty effective. Okay, so that's that's a, a screen, or some people would, you know, call it a, a, a zone package, inside-outside zone kind of package thing. Um, we um, only really run the inside zone or the, the um, you know, what we use as the counter out of power uh, out of this uh, set um, or as a counter to power, um, but the blocking up front uh, is the same um, and, 
uh, all of the other rules apply. Um, so what we're going to do in another session is we're going to talk about, well, so with all of that, when do you run power and when do you run zone? And although I say power is my favorite play, uh, and I think it's the best play in football, um, you know, there, and you can run it on any down at any time. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, not necessarily the optimal play in certain uh, situations. So we want to talk a little bit more about uh, situational football um, and zone versus power and what that means. And then, you know, some of the other stuff that we can finish up with in following sessions would be a quicker passing game, the screen, the quicker screen game, uh, and um, and also how do we get our, our fullback, our you know our big back, our blocking back? How do we kind of incorporate him into this offense? Because if you are committing to a two back uh, offense at some uh, level, um, you've got this guy in the backfield who you want to take advantage of. So we'll come back to that uh, in another session as well. Thanks.